Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today I want to talk about personality tests. So a lot of people come up to me and they go like, Eric, personality tests are bogus. There, there's no science, there's no data, there's no statistics. It doesn't work. It's astrology. It's pure astrology, okay? So these same people, they often go and approach life uh, from a perspective of... Uh, lack of psychology or lack of psychological awareness so you can go through life with psychological awareness you can know people you can know yourself you can know who you are you can know what you want in life you can know what kind of things you're attracted to in a person you can know your family and your friends you can know what they like and what they dislike but you can also go through life not knowing about these things and a lot of people they go through life not knowing how these things work why are my friends so sensitive? Why do they get upset so easily? My girlfriend is such an enigma. I have no idea what she means. She gets crazy about the most bizarre things, you know. So a lot of people go through life with this. My coworkers are so stupid. Oh my god. I face palm every day. I have no clue how people work. And these people can also go through life uh, on a level lacking of base self-awareness. And that can be an issue, you know, when you're picking a good job for yourself, when you're thinking about your ideal career, what's your passion, what's your purpose, what do you want for yourself, what kind of things are important to you, you know, do you have any important values that are necessary? You know, you can go through life not knowing these things and that can cause you to make a lot of mistakes and bad calls and bad judgments. You can end up choosing to act outside of your ethics and your higher judgment and your morality. And you can feel guilty over it, you can feel anxious, you can feel stressed, you can feel confused, you can feel stuck on decisions, what road do I take, where do I go, how do I get here. You can also get into a stubbornness of not knowing or lacking self-awareness but proceeding as if you had it. So you can go out mimicking the strategies of successful people. You can look up to role models. You can have a person or an ideal citizen in mind. You can try to work towards getting that ideal CV, you know, that any employer would love. You can go through life looking to be this perfect citizen that is good at everything and that fits any role and can meet up to any expectation in society. But going through this is also going to bring up a sense of emptiness in yourself. You can go through life being the perfect son or the perfect daughter. You can go through life being perfect in any way, you know, meeting up to all your co-workers and your boss expectations. But you can also go through life feeling miserable as you do. Constantly stressed, constantly uncomfortable, never satisfied with yourself, nothing is enough, nothing feels right, you know. And you still find yourself in this emptiness wanting more and that's... I think true to a lot of people out there, you know, a lot of us we cling to jobs we don't want or to clothes that don't fit us, to masks and roles and personas that are far, far, far from who we are. So why do we take personality tests? We do it to get back to ourselves and to remind ourselves of who we are. We answer these personality tests based on our own values. We're asked, what do you like? What do you enjoy? What do you dislike? What brings you stress? What's your attitude to this or that? How do you react in this or that situation? And you're given constant feedback about yourself. And you, as you answer all these questions, you're constantly learning about yourself. You're reminded that, oh yeah, this is important to me. And I, I don't care about that. You're learning that, yeah, this is something that matters to me. And no, I don't need this. And so you're learning about your own taste, your own personal aesthetics, your own personal values, your own personal morals. And as you do, you can get better at making decisions, you can get better at understanding yourself, and you can get better at understanding other people. Suddenly other people are not so stupid after all. Suddenly their priorities make sense from their personal perspective. It makes sense that they do this or that they like to be out and party. It makes sense that they like to sit down by themselves and that they are quiet. They're not stupid, they're not hostile, they're not cool, they're just different. And so you get better at dealing with these people. You get better at dealing with and interacting with them and getting them to open up. Because you make them feel less judged. You make people feel seen, you make people feel heard. And your emotional quotient goes up, straight up. And that's also part of the value of personality tests and personality psychology. 
You heard many times that the MTI was pure bogus, and part of it is. Part of it has stereotypes, part of it has problems, part of it has issues. It's not perfect, it lacks a lot of insight. It narrows down what is often very diverse and very complicated. That's why you need to watch my YouTube channel. Often what I've been doing is I've been targeting a lot of the stereotypes and a lot of the issues and I've been trying to pinpoint a way forward. I believe there is a good way to do personality psychology and a bad way to do it. The bad way is to assume everyone is in a specific box. Everyone has a color. There's red types and blue types and green types. The feelers are stupid, thinkers are cold, intuitives are crazy and sensors are boring, you know. A lot of people approach life with these stereotypes and at least assumptions. Their idea is you cannot act outside of your personality type. Your personality type is some kind of static box that you cannot escape from. Everyone is stuck in one of these 16 type boxes. And that's why people dislike the MTI, because they assume this is what the MTI is. Truth of the matter is the MTI is a lot more than that, can be a lot more of that, if the MTI was a flow psychology. A flow psychology would instead focus on who people are at their best. Anyone can act any way they choose. You can be whoever you want to be. You can put on any mask you like. You can choose to dress however you like. But you're going to find some ways of being are more comfortable to you than others. So flow psychology teaches you that you have a unique way of flow. You have a unique way of being when you are at your best. That is different from how other people are at their best. You have different values and that means you have different ways, when you, different things that make you happy. Different choices you need to make to make a happy life for yourself. So what you need to be doing as you take the personality test and as you learn about yourself is learn about your ideal environment, your ideal home, your ideal workplace. Do I like this workplace? Is it too extroverted for me? Is it too introverted? Is it too quiet? Is it too busy? Do I like this environment? Is it creative enough? enough? Does it give me enough freedom? Does it give me enough uh, control? Does it give me enough discipline? Is it organized enough? Is it too chaotic for me? It teaches you all these things about you know, what you want, fundamentally what you want. And it teaches you that people are not white pieces of paper. Not everyone fits in the same mold. Not everyone is the same. We are too stuck in these boxes today. Everyone is stuck in the same box, this box of the citizen, you know. The biggest stereotype we see today is from society, sold to us by society. It's the ideal person. The ideal of the ideal person. There is a box everyone is trying to fit into. Everyone is trying to look more or less the same today. Everyone is buying more or less the same clothes today. Everyone is following the same streamlined fashion. Everyone is stuck in the same constraining role, the role of the average person. And the average person cannot be happy. The person who is like everyone else is going to feel like nobody. The person who can be themselves truly, authentically, is going to finally feel that they have purpose, that they are somebody, and that they have value, and that their decisions matter. So in the end, Personality psychology is about flow, happiness, and meaning. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, if you support me in this, visit patreon.com slash ericdor or leave a comment down below. I hope to see you guys in the next video.